options for Mount Pleasant War Memorial Community Centre then. Yeah, now, he, no, which, no. Uh, who have we got here to so doing this uh, speak to this? Oh, just, um, just, we just need some clarification over whether we're public or excluded at this point. Just I don't know. Well, we have to move a motion to be public excluded. We're I know, but public. Uh, just heard a question. Are we in? No, we do not. So hey? They just asking, are we in the excluded? No, we're doing this. We're doing this in public. No. Okay. So, yeah. 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 So, um, obviously, uh, you know, since we had the presentation this morning, there's been a, a little bit of discussion behind the scenes to see if we can get to a um, situation where we enable this uh, project to um, to proceed. I think that's the general impression that I've got from uh, people who who um, have been intimately involved in the discussion on it. We've got some suggested uh, recommendations, but um, I'm not sure. Jason, did you want to sort of speak just to the uh, to the, the the financial issues in relation to this yeah. uh, recommendation? I, I, and I don't know whether anyone can respond to the issue of the under um, confirming that that is the that is the extent of the under insurance. Uh, I wasn't going to respond to any um, insurance questions whatsoever. Just more from a from a financial sense. Yeah. So it probably help if we had the um, resolutions up there that we drafted oh, okay. right. okay. um, to see. Um, look, council is hamstrung at the moment. Um, I guess financially, uh, we've got an annual plan which we're currently out for submission in, and so the preferred option was to go through the annual plan process. Listening to the community group, of course, that's an issue around timing. Um, what we were proposing was um, still go through the annual plan submission process um, there is the preferred option but to agree to defer the repayment of the interest in principle for the community loan until the annual plan is adopted um, and so that delays any time pressure for the community group to get to get up and finished mm. Right. And that's, look, this is inconsistent with the community loan scheme, which um, we have a 4.5% um, rate of return. So notes five and six are just there to say this is inconsistent. But as long as we say that it's inconsistent. That's right. Um, but this gives uh, a, an opportunity to, um, to resolve the issue in terms of the uh, draft annual plan. So it gives us the opportunity of doing that but in the meantime provides them with the, the sort of financial security so that they can proceed? Potentially. There's a, there's a debate around how long the community loan is deferred for, which councillors will have. Well, I mean, if we deferred it for 12 months, then would that, would that kind of give people the, you know, the, the, the surety? I mean, in terms of the dollars and cents, how much per month is, are we talking about? I think it was thirteen hundred dollars um, yeah. per month as the servicing of that. Um, so, so that would be a minor effect. It's a minor effect the, on council. In, in terms of the council budget, yeah. I mean, it's a, certainly a lot of money, but it's yes. a minor effect in terms of the overall budget. Okay. Um, well, I've got lots of people that with their hands up. So let's. Let, okay. Well, I'll go Paul, Yanni, and Andrew, and Vicky. Can we just agree, to, if, if we wanted to, around this table, if we had just agreed to pay the $425,000 to the community group to finish these works, do we have the ability to do that? And what are the complications around proposing to do that? To answer that, I'd need to know where it was coming from. Um, the Capital Endowment Fund is committed. Mm -hmm. The Council is forecasting a surplus this financial year which then goes into the opening balance for the rates um, for the following year. So the lower rates, number of 5% proposed at the moment, is partly due to the surplus we have this year. So if we were to fund it this year, there would be an immediate <coughs> rates impact um, in the 16-17 annual plan of between 0.08 and 0.11%. <coughs> but we could actually legally do that. I don't believe so. Diane, you might better help on that. But um, 
at the moment we have no identified funding source for this, so that, that's the issue. So we're trying to come up with solutions that might work, um, but at the moment without um, going through the annual plan process, I don't know of any other alternative. Jason's correct and he says that any, of course council can do you know, whatever it likes within reason, but there will be a rating effect that needs to be considered that will mm. fall into the 16, 17 year. But wouldn't it fall there anyway if we're going to put it into the annual plan mm. for next year? It's yeah. correct, but we can't, I mean, I think that what we're trying to do is to stay within the parameters that we have set ourselves in terms of how we're handling the annual plan. Um, I mean, <coughs> Yeah, it's, it, it's, it, this is why I don't like taking resolutions off the floor of the council meeting when we haven't got a, a report that identifies yes. where the money's coming from, how it's being resolved, etc., etc. Well, up, it, you know, that might look like it's an odd way to behave, but actually I think it's a um, requirement of the Local Government Act to actually identify your, your sources of funding. I don't want to make a decision around a rating impact um, without the proper analysis of it, but if we go through the annual plan process, there will be some exactly. trade-offs, and there will be trade-offs in the process, um, as we already know, in terms of the work that's already been done on the capital program. <coughs> so it seems to me that if we can find an immediate solution that actually takes the pressure off the organisation, and I would have thought not having to pay interest in principal is spe spelt A-L, not L-E, thank you, um, and uh, if, if we could... Um, no, it's uh, not. Uh, no, no, no. Typo. No. Yes, it no. is. In this case it's it is. A-L. Uh, it's A-L. It's short for, it's principal sum. It's a, um, yeah. an it's adjective. A single. Yeah. It's not a noun. Um, so uh, <laughs> I think <laughs> that the, um, it seems to me that the, the issue here is can we, can, can we give the uh, community group the assurance that it needs to get on with the job of um, you know, building the facility and, and getting things up and running, but at the same time undertake to look at the grant that they've requested in the terms of the annual plan. And that gives us the opportunity to do it in the context of everything else, because something has to give. You can't give and not take. You have to you have to get a balance, and I'd rather give them the, the, the guarantee that we're going to um, consider it in the context of the annual plan. Um, there is a commitment here uh, around the table, as people can hear, and if we can defer the re repayment of the interest and the principal in the meantime, it gives them the assurance that they need to carry on. So, um, that, give them that, the money, that, that's, sorry? It doesn't actually give them the money. That's an annual plan process. But that's an annual plan oh, process, which is two, two, within two months. It's within eight weeks. It's not very far away. It's the end of June. We just sign off on the annual plan. I mean, the timing of this is, is terrible. I don't know how the, um, you know, and we do need to do a review of this whole process about how we got to a situation that within two days we have to make a decision. That there's something wrong with the process that led to this. Let's, let's unpack that. I, I still think that part of the, um, the problem arose when the council underinsured this asset. And that's what makes me want to really look for a solution. But to give uh, the community the opportunity to get this up and running um, without having to um, repay interest and principal for um, for a period of time, I, I would have thought that would that would enable them to proceed, knowing that we were going to resolve this in the context of the annual plan. Yanni, thank you. Um, so currently, my understanding is we have money on budget um, around our suburban master plans for this corridor in this current financial year. Is that correct? Uh, I'm not aware of that. Uh, hard to answer on the fly. Okay. Sorry. So, I mean, I'm, I'm basically looking at like the current capital program. We've got 1.6 million for ferry roads. So this is operational funding. So the, the, the issue, I guess, it's capital to the group, but council need to fund it as, as operational funding because we don't, I guess, own the building. Right. Oh, okay. Um, so, I mean, I guess for me, like, it just seemed that if we've got money on budget this year, 
that we're not going to spend on the main road master plan and we've heard that part of the cost of this work <coughs> is actually to enhance the amenity of not just the community centre but McCormick's Bay, you know, the, the playground, the car park, that that seems a very kind of sensible solution. So there's money on budget, not being spent, proposed to be carried forward, that is actually a running Yanni, amenity. All concept. of that has been allocated in terms of the budget that we're considering as part no. of the annual plan. No, that's fine, but I'm just system. not going okay. to... You know, you can sit there and say it's dead easy, that we can just take money that's allocated to this purpose and spend it on something else. It doesn't work like that. So, so that's enough. Okay. Enough. So the second question that I have is the difference between now and when this was originally considered, whereas we now have our global insurance settlement. So surely the money that was part of that settlement can be allocated towards the purpose for which we received it, yeah, which is the fix no, global settlement settlement has been facilities. Made. The whole purpose Sorry, of a global settlement. The, the point, point of our global settlement is, is was it means that it's up to us to decide right, that's, how that's we will allocate making. the money. Yes. We are not so, going to allocate a component of the global settlement at this meeting today. Okay, so but just in terms of the management decision around but it's no, not, it's not a management previously, decision. It's the money. previously what we'd done with our facilities was we'd said you've got one point four million, that's what you were insured for. And we did a statement of position with our insurer and they said yes we agree to 1.4 and that money was seen as the money going into the rebuild or the repair of that facility because we've now done the global settlement yeah. we now are able as a council to make individual calls around facilities around what's needed Diane, I, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry but i'm gonna um let you but only because you put your hand up, I'm going to let you respond it's to that. It's actually been answered. Well, I, I know, I know, I know, I know. But for the purpose of which we received it, just which is to fix our facilities. Words one syllable for Mr. Johansson. Putting aside that, yeah, but not through that, a process that wasn't like valued this. correctly, the full entitlement well, the the for that for facility it. has been paid to Mount Pleasant. So whereas the rest of the council got 60 something percent cents in the dollar, the smaller CCTOs that were, or the smaller entities that were being insured. On, on count, you know, by council on their behalf, were paid out the full hundred cents. So they've already had all of the money that, and more that they are entitled to under the global settlement. Sorry, but that doesn't make sense. Like in Sumner, for example, we only had insurance of a million dollars. We've just committed ten million dollars to that project. So we have actually used money from the global settlement to meet the sh the, the shortfall of the undervaluation of what it would cost to replace the assets. We are not government. negotiating the global settlement and how it's going to be spent here. Um, Andrew. When do we do it? Thank you. And um, I've got a number of questions and they refer to where we're at rather than where we've been, it's fair to say. Um, two issues that arise from the report. So under option three, um, the impact on rating referred to in clause 8.3 on page 28 what is the impact on rating of option three? Option three is funding it. Um, the impact on rates at the 303,000 level was 0.08%. At um, the 428,000, uh, it is 0.11% on rates. And that would have effect in the 16, 17 year, obviously. Yep, okay, great. Now, if we pass the resolution that's proposed here. Subject. Does that allow the civil, presumably that doesn't allow the civil works to proceed until after the 30th of June, in as much as assuming that the annual plan process results in the 440,000 being added to budget at that time, that's the point at which the funds are available for those civil works to proceed. Am I correct in making that assumption? I can't answer that. Um, it could be that the community group chooses to proceed on the assumption that they may be funded through council, um, or they may not. Yeah, I mean, that really drives to the heart of my next question. What we're doing here is presuming an outcome of the annual plan debate, and I'm aware that under the Local Government Act we need to go into that debate with an open mind, and I'm concerned that what we're doing here is potentially passing a resolution that makes an assumption that we will make that further decision. You could almost say binds us to that decision for today's decision actually to, to really work. Um, how do we sit 
in terms of that because you know I'd be very concerned if I was the community group that today's decision wouldn't give me the confidence to proceed because I'd be in an environment where the council may in fact not make the subsequent decision the way that today's resolution anticipates and certainly. there's a, a process issue there that concerns me yeah certainly the recommendation of the option uh, or recommendation three option one is to defer it to the annual plan uh, process so we would <coughs> where the decision would be made so given that that may mean that the civil works cannot be completed until after the 30th of June when there is that level of certainty. What effect is there on the construction contract, which we know is, is a timing risk, and also on the resource consent requirements? And is it possible under this resolution that the community group could end up deciding not to draw down the loan because of the uncertainty or could draw down the loan with no way of actually completing the project and therefore we end up in a very unusual situation where the loan has been drawn down for a project which is unable to be completed um, and we end up having to potentially defer the interest on an ongoing basis or otherwise see the community group in an unsustainable position. That's a question I can't answer. Okay. I mean, that really cuts to the heart of my concerns, I think. Thank you. Could I ask a question, please, over a process where we're noting a, uh, a contrary to the Section 80 of the LJ? Does this open the door, so if, or set a precedent, if other groups come in in any given year uh, prior to the annual plan process of submissions and hearings? Couldn't this be used as a precedent if money's granted today? I believe it does. I mean, I'm aware of other entities that would also like top-up funding, yep. and they have also been encouraged to make application through the annual plan process, so that can be considered, as the Mayor said, in June, along with everything else. And, and as you would be aware, Councillor, from previous yes. annual plan discussions, sometimes things are deferred and there's a balancing in order to achieve what's, what's required. And I under appreciate that Council could, of its own mind, pluck money and give it to a group, but actually is there also a risk in terms of the LGA requirements about uh, consultation? I would have to defer to okay. my legal expert over there on that one. We are in the annual plan process yeah. where we're going out for consultation and you're to approach that with an open mind in terms of everything that comes towards you. This group has been invited to make an application under the annual plan. No decision, no final decision on that can be made until you get to the end of that process. Can, can I just understand the implications of that for the community group? They have two days within which they have to sign a contract. Why would any community group, as a group of individuals, sign a contract with a shortfall of 400 or 303,000 um, when they have no certainty around that. I mean, effectively, we put the kibosh on the, on the Mount Pleasant Community Centre, don't we, by well, delaying I, it till the annual plan? I, I can't answer that on behalf of the, the group, but all I'm saying is what it, that's our process that we're obliged to follow under the Act. Whether the group can um, negotiate a, a further deferral of the contract they have to sign, I don't know. Yeah. But in terms of our responsibility under the Act, <coughs> that is the process that Can we I just clarify follow. also? I didn't read it as a, as a contractual issue. I read it as um, having to service the loan. No, no, no. Mm. There's a contract that they have to sign by the 30th. Well, it's draw down. It's they're, going to pay, they're going to finish mm -hmm. the programme off. They need to draw down the rest of the loan. And the, my concern basically is if you if you look at the resolution we've got up there, and I think um, Councillor Turner sort of alluded We're to saying this saying that the, the the drawdown of the loan isn't enough. The drawdown of the loan is enough to complete the building. But they need. But to that make puts that them in the position that they can't actually uh, use the building until the civil works are done, and there is no certainty in that 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 civil works. Uh, in, in fact, we're actually predetermining in this this here, which means I'd rather not go into into the annual plan with a predetermined uh, condition. I'd rather go. Let's just cut to the chase. Let's fund this thing now and make the determination but today. Hold on. I, I mean, the mere wants clarification, Paul. The four hundred. Why don't we just vary the resource consent so that they can? No, no. That the resource consent isn't the issue anymore. Why not? It's not that it, 
That's not the issue. Can I just clarify for me? I'm assuming that well, the council, they have to do the in civil theory, wars? makes all of its Better decisions compliance. in relation to the tenure plan oh, and the annual plan. But given sense. the nature of councils, there will always be things that come at them. Yep. Yes. And I'm assuming that the council has the capacity to make a decision that alters aspects of the um, of the plan in this financial year, such that if we make the call that some of our operational surplus goes to this that is legally possible. Hold on, we don't, there, we there don't, this is not a community <coughs> facility Sorry, that we own, is it? can I the legal answer first? There are two no. bits to that. No. One is, yes, the community is yeah. there yeah. so that we can make decisions that are inconsistent with our policies. My concern about this one, though, would be that you lack the information to actually make a decision um, along the lines that you're suggesting. And, and I think that's come through from what Jason has said. So what information do we lack? I don't... But what I get from staff is that we don't have the money at the moment. It's all oh, allocated. That's not true. Well, what now, I got from staff was that there is an operational surplus at in have in which they have factored into yes, next year's that. annual plan. I understand that. But whether we spend it, allocate it now, or in July 1. If we the allocate it on now, we have to exactly allocate an increase in rates to pay for it. Because that's the only way that we can definitely do that now. So I don't want to do that. I want to actually look at this in the context of all of the things that we have on budget in terms of the annual plan. There is no money just sitting there in a bucket waiting to be allocated for this purpose. So that's that's the work that we need to do actually, in the context of the annual plan. Actually, I still do not understand why we have got this within two days of a decision needing to be made. That's the thing that I find incredibly frustrating. It's the point that Ian's making. How can we make a, a decision yeah, without having the, the, the quality of the advice that we need in order to allocate funding for this project. There is definitely a commitment around the table to support this project. It is not um, a, a community centre that is owned by the council. It is very much one that is owned by the community, but we own the land. Um, and, and we have worked, I think, quite collaboratively with this community, and I don't know how we've got to the position <coughs> that it's like down to the wire. Um, and in a way, I'm really glad that this is not in PX because it actually gives people an understanding in the context of the um, presentation that we had this morning of the challenge that a council has in terms of allocating its budget when everything is allocated. We're in an annual plan process. So my question is, how do we get to where we are now? There's a there's a commitment around the table to this project, um, but how do we get to the um, to a, a sufficient degree of um, clarity for the uh, Mount Pleasant Community Centre and Residents Association to proceed with the project, knowing that we will come on board, but we've got a lot more work to do to find the resource um, to do so. And um, I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure of how we get there. Phil. I'm just wondering uh, through you, uh, Leanne, if I can ask Ian, if, if we were to add in for a sort of assurance for the Mount Pleasant Community Group that we support, continue to support the project in principle, or if that's leaning too far towards predetermination for the... Well, that's the, I think that's the so key issue here. It's the predetermination I'm, is the same as making a decision my, today to actually fund it. It's the yeah. same thing. So I just wonder if Ian might comment on that. If you're just making an in-principle decision, um, yes, that might get us over the line. I'm just wondering whether we shouldn't take five and talk to the group and yes. see yep. what... I think that's a, a very great good idea. idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'd support that what motion, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, I mean, I think that's a sensible solution. Can I just mm -hmm. ask, because we were told that there's other groups yeah. coming to us, how many other groups have facilities that were insured by council that were undervalued for replacement? Can we not who are deal with Yanni? Yanni, can, can we not deal with other matters at this moment? Could we not deal with this now, please? We are actually trying to achieve an outcome here for a community that you represent. So I think that leaving well enough alone would be a good idea, mm. David. Um, look, there are some consenting issues in, in code of compliance um, 
requirements attached to all of this as well. And I wonder if, in amongst our um, conversation with the group and um, our staff, that we could factor in any um, possible sort of assistance through the code of compliance process that may be of, Is there new of uh, help to get us over the line as well. Um, I have asked um, the um, compliance and um, uh, consents group to have a look at it and uh, requested that we get the specific information right at the back there, um, the specific information to see what is required for the code of compliance as opposed to what's the nice to have. That was option five. Mm -hmm. um, could I suggest that we follow Ian's advice and because we could go round and round in circles yep, on this. Agree. So can yeah. we actually put a brakes on this for a bit and let the staff talk with the organisation? Yep. Thank you. All right. So, um, David, that was the option five you just mentioned. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, the, well, the next the next item is the um, public excluded. So, <laughs> we're going to have to. Um, we have a break. We adjourn now. Do the do finish this. Stuff and then, then go into public well, No, no, we'll, we, we might as well come back to this. Wait, I mean, how, how much time? I don't know, probably 10 minutes, 5 minutes? Yeah. Five minutes. Just to June. Just, just to June. Just to June. Just to June. Well, we, could, we could go into. Oh, no. no yeah. Okay, yeah. It's just easy. Okay, yes. well, just to June. June. Yep. All right. Well, do you want to do you want to take a half an hour for lunch and come back at? Yep. Yeah, June for lunch. Come, come back come at 12 30. Yep. Yeah, that would be good. Adjourned for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you.